Hi, this is ET370 Lab 6, and in this lab we're going to go over age bridges, uh, just a manual one with some switches, and I have it built here. Uh, we'll look at how to run an NMOS, NPN, PMOS, uh, and then uh, we'll look at building an entire age bridge using these uh, transistors. Uh, we'll also incorporate flyback uh, diodes and then make sure that we have proper grounding, because otherwise if we don't do that, things don't work. Okay, so we're going to go through one, two, three, four, five programs here in this lab. All right. And so the first program, what we want you to do is just build a very simple H bridge. Uh, the first thing we want you to do is actually build it on paper, just draw it, right? And it should be pretty simple four switches, right? You got four switches, uh, a motor, and a power supply, right? And uh, what we want to do is we want to have these switches in parallel with LEDs when those are going to act as the flyback diodes. And if you recall, the flyback diodes are there to take up the current when this inductive motor stops, uh, well, when we stop applying power to it, right? Because the current in it wants to go somewhere and it's going to go through these flyback diodes, okay? And so the way we're going to, I'm going to show you the implementation. You just take a six volt power supply here and uh, if I run this, you can see we can set this uh, to six volts, okay? And so uh, you can just click here and you see the voltage. And uh, look at this, if I close these diagonal switches, I should get the motor to run. And look, you can see the RPM. I know it's not very exciting on the simulation, but you can see it goes to negative, what is that, 12,000 RPM. Now, if I close the switch, it shuts off, and I um, close or open up those switches, it shuts off. Now, if I close these other diagonals, then it spins, but in the opposite direction, as we would expect. So we want you to build this, right? And uh, hopefully you can do it without, you know, uh, copying this, you can do it in your own way, but um, that's just a simple H bridge manually controlled. Now, in order to build this full fledged crazy monstrosity that we're going to have you build here, which is also an H bridge, it's using PMOS and NMOS and NPN, we want to baby step it. And so the first thing we're going to do is have you build it with an NMOS, and then we're going to have you build an NPN PMOS, and then we're going to have you put it all together. That way, you're not getting lost in the sauce here trying to build this right out of the gate. Okay, so let's just look at the first implementation here, and that's just a baby NMOS, just one NMOS here, a motor, and uh, imagine this zero to five volts of the Arduino. And uh, if you recall from class, um, and if you look at those other NMOS or PMOS lectures, I believe it's lecture eight, um, you would see how this works, right? If this is high, the gate's gonna go high. If the gate's high, then this shorts. If this shorts, then this voltage of six volts is gonna pass through the motor and down to ground, yay. If this is zero, the gate voltage goes to zero and this opens up no current. I actually made a simulation of this for you. So uh, this will actually be in this, in the, um, a link to this will be in the description of this YouTube video. So you can go and check that out. So I'm gonna run this and you can see here, I have a slider voltage. Right now there's no gate voltage, no current, Therefore, this is not moving. But if I take this slider voltage, which is essentially like the Arduino, and set it to five volts, look at this. The gate turns on and current flows through the motor, right, through the transistor, and everything's happy. The motor would spin. Now, watch what happens to the current in the motor when I shut off the gate voltage here, right? it gets eaten up by the flyback diode, right? So those flyback diodes are important for taking up that flyback current. And notice the cathode is pointed in the direction of the positive side of the voltage supply. You don't want it, the, uh, you don't want the anode pointed here because otherwise uh, your, your motor is essentially shorted. So make sure you have the orientation met. You have a 10K uh, resistor here as a pull down and you have a 330 ohm resistor here, okay? So pretty simple, again, the description of this this will be in the uh, link uh, below, okay? So check that out. Now, here's an implementation of that. You have an NMOS here, and it's, uh, let's see, can I zoom in? Beautiful. Look at this, gate drain source. They label it for you nicely, okay? And I have a, a 330 and a 10K, good. Oh, this is 1K, this should be 10K, okay? And then uh, let's see if we move over here, uh-oh. Control Z is our friend, yep, perfect. And if I start this simulation, okay, what we're doing is I'm actually running the input gate voltage using the fade program. Now I could take this pin here and 
go to zero and five eight, uh, zero and five volts. But now notice the PWM is going is going into this gate, which is essentially PWM this transistor, which is PWMing the voltage across this motor. And I'm actually viewing that through this oscilloscope, which is nice. I have a flyback diode here, and uh, this is the implementation, right? And if I look at the code, all I did was I copied the fade program from Arduino. So we've done this before, and I think lab two. Okay, now I'm not going to give you the link to this uh, to this uh, Tinkercad, but um, I think if you if you need to, you can look at this and probably get get a copy it. But I'm hoping that you should be able to build this from this schematic here, right? Because that's how I built it. All right, so that's just the NPN. That's if you remember, that's going to be the lower corner of one of these uh, H bridges, right? Now let's look at these upper corner where we have an NPN and a PMOS, NPN and PMOS, right? How do we put that together? How does that work, all right? And again, I believe lecture eight uh, goes, into, goes into this. And uh, if we look closely, what do we have? We have a baby helper NPN and the PMOS up here. And now the motor in this case is on the low side. Before the motor was on the high side and the transistor was on the low side. Here, the PMOS is on the high side and the motor's on the low side. So what's going on? When this is low, this is essentially an open circuit. When this is an open circuit, the gate voltage is pulled high and this PMOS shuts off. Now, when the Arduino or whatever source you have here is high, then current's gonna flow, right? The NPN's gonna turn on, essentially shorting this guy to ground, right? And bringing this voltage low, right? Once this voltage is brought low, then what? then this PMOS activates and turns on, okay? And so then we have uh, the motor spin, okay? So not too bad, but let's see it in action. So if I go over here, um, I have it running and you can see here that the, that the gate voltage is low, no current, so this is open circuit and this voltage is high, right? You can see green and no current. If I bring that voltage up, look what happens. NPN pulls current, the gate voltage is brought low, Okay, and then it, this allows um, current to flow through. Okay, now you could always change this resistor, which would bring this voltage even lower, right? Um, to, to activate this uh, gate voltage even higher. So um, these are things that you can play with, but uh, we're just trying to keep it simple for this class and just only deal with 330 ohm resistors and 10K resistors, okay? So not too bad, okay? And so I can bring that back again and notice the flyback diode takes up the current right here, okay? So I'm gonna stop that and even show you the implementation. Now look at this, I have an NPN transistor. Now you guys have an NPN transistor in your kits and uh, unfortunately, look at this, collector, base, emitter. But if you look at the NPNs in your, um, in your kit, I actually include the data sheets in your lab but look at the pinouts of your NPN emitter base collector. So you just have to know that when you're physically implementing your big H bridge is that the big, the baby NPNs have a, the opposite order of their pinouts as the Tinkercad one. So not a big deal if you remember, but it is a big deal if you're struggling and you're to, to get it to work. Okay. So a little bit annoying. Okay. So let's uh, zoom out. The PMOS actually and the NMOS have the same pinouts as the one you guys have, which is nice. Gate drain source. And you can see from here, it'll have gate drain source, right? Okay. So always good to look at the data sheets. Now, Tinkercad is one thing, real world is another. So you got you to gotta get both things correct. Now, let's see if this runs. I have, again, the fade program here. Pin nine is going to the, the base of the NPN, right? And uh, let's see it run. So... Same setup, right? I got the O-scope measuring the voltage across the uh, motor and you can see that motor uh, spinning up and spinning down, right? And uh, this is exactly what the fade program is doing. Now in both cases for, uh, for the NPN version or the, or the, sorry, the NMOS version and the PMOS version, they are only spinning in one direction. They are never able to reverse direction because we're not using the H-bridge behavior yet, okay? Um, so these both fade the motor, but they don't change the direction, okay? So the last thing we want you to do is program four and five. So in program four, we want you to just build out the H-bridge, right? So we want you to build the full crazy H-bridge and that's this guy here, all right? And so let's look at what's going on. We have a voltage source, 
six volts ground, let's say, we have an input A and B. And look at the cross connection. A is connected all the way, these diagonals are connected. Now notice here, I said this is not connected, right? This pin, this line, sorry, is only going straight through. It's not like a node here. And this line is going straight up, but they are not connected together. So just be careful of that. Okay, and notice this line input B is connected to its diagonal, right? And so the way this is working, if A is high and B is low, then A is gonna activate these diagonal transistors, right? And current's gonna flow from the voltage source from left to right to ground. If A is low and B is high, then the current is gonna flow from the voltage source through this diagonal transistor down through the motor to ground in a, in a reverse direction from right to left. If both are low, the whole system shuts off. If both are high, that's bad news. And we don't wanna do that for this specific type of H bridge because you're gonna activate all four transistors, which means current's gonna flow all the way from the top down along the rails and avoid the motor. And I'll show you this in the simulation, okay? So the simulation is right here and I have exactly the same setup. Let's run it. And uh, look, I have zero, zero, nothing's going on. I have this motor represented as a resistor and inductor here. Let's turn on the A side. A activates the baby NPN, which activates the PMOS, current flows. A is also activating the diagonal, which is the NMOS, current flows from top to bottom, yay. Now I'm gonna bring this down, okay? Voltage goes up. On this one, look at this diagonal. Now current's flowing from right to left, very cool. And uh, we're all happy, right? It's just the symmetric of the opposite of the other uh, version. Now, if I bring them both high, what happens? They all turn on and look, current's going on both rails. This is like shorting your power supply. This is no good, bad news bears. Don't do this, okay? All right, so let's, uh, let's uh, uh, go into what we want you to do for program four. Program four is essentially, this is it. You wanna build this and just take this and touch it to five volts. You should see the motor spin one, one way. You take this touch and make sure that's grounded. Touch the other side to five volts. You should, should see the motor spin the other way, okay? And all that can be accomplished in Tinkercad, right? And so here's a crazy implementation of that in Tinkercad, right? Um, I have it, but really you've built half of it already. You've built the NMOS, you've built the NPN PMOS. Now you're just putting it all together. I know it seems kind of crazy, but what do you need? You need six 10Ks and you need six 330 ohms, I believe, right? Now here's a weird, funny thing that you're gonna have to do to make the simulation work. Uh, we found that if you put a 20K resistor from each motor lead to ground, the simulation is happy when we run it into Arduino. It, for some reason, complains when you don't do it. I don't, we have to figure out there's some numerical issue. But do that, add a little 20K resistor from each motor lead to the ground and everything will run happily. Because when you are asked to now complete program five, that's where it's gonna get a little tricky. So program five, what we're asking for you to do is this. Don't change the circuit, keep your H bridge intact, but what we want you to do is run it uh, sinusoidally. So we want that we want you to be able to run that motor uh, fading up, fading down, but also switching direction, right? So here you can see in these uh, intervals of time, the duty cycle is positive, and the do here the duty cycle is negative. Uh, you're going to have to figure out some code to handle what the inputs are gonna be for A and B when the duty cycle is positive and negative. You might have to use some if statements. Ooh, you'll have to use a sign function and maybe millis, which is a function of time. And then you'll have to think, how am I gonna get this to be a frequency of 0.05 Hertz? You might have to use uh, some uh, pi or tau, some conversion to radians per second perhaps, right? So this will be a little, little bit tricky, but the code is actually very, very simple. It's only a few lines to be honest. Okay, now, yes, you can implement this in Tinkercad, which I have here, and I'm going to show you it running in Tinkercad right now. So check this out. You can see it's spinning up and look at the sign. It's positive, right? And you can see these, di I'm, I'm monitoring the current. These diagonal transistors have current going through. I have a six volt source here, right? Okay, and then it's uh, spinning down, good. And now look at this. Now the other diagonal flows, right? Okay, and it's spinning up. 
Good. And it's uh, and after a while, it slows back down, right? So it's doing the sinusoidal pattern, right? Okay. So this is what we want you to implement in the physical world, right? Using the supplies from your kit. All right. We want you to see this behavior. Okay. So let's uh, let me stop this simulation and, and go back to here. So like I said, you're going to have to do this. Um, and you're going to have to look at the data sheets. Don't forget these NPNs are connect are pinned backwards relative to the Tinkercad. So you just got to be careful. And so those NPNs have emitter base collector this way. So double check those pins. All right. So the last thing I'm going to show you is the physical implementation on a real circuit just to show you what we expect. So I'm going to stop the share screen. We're going to go to the real camera. So check this out. So stop the share screen. Okay, so now we're here and I have it physically built out. I got my two NMOS, my two PMOS, my two little baby NPNs. Notice they're backwards. I know you can see the flat pointing this way. Um, and so you just, you got the cross connection here, pin three and five are gonna be my A and B. And I have a ground, make sure I have the ground. You guys have a ground, look at this ground here and look at these jumpers. You guys see these jumpers, right? Gotta be careful. Now, I hope, I mean, yeah, you can kind of see how to build this, my layout here. Um, I got all my resistors properly, 10K and 330 ohm resistors all scattered out through this, right? Um, but yeah. Here's my motor, here's my little fan, here's my two leads. I don't need to have those silly 20K resistors from here to ground, right? In the real world, this one works fine. Um, but I got ground, three, five, and what you guys can use is your nine volt battery from your kits and your little, uh, uh, what do you call it? Nine volt jack, and this is from your 12 volt source. So this actually works pretty well. Right now the Arduino is running. Uh, I got PWM going on these pins. There's kind of switching back and forth and this is gonna start spinning in both directions. Ready? There we go. So you can, I hope you can hear it. Yep. You see it's changed the direction. Okay, spinning up and then spinning down. And then changing the direction and then spinning up. And then spinning down. Beautiful. So this is what we expect you to have for your physical implementation of an H-bridge with NMOS, PMOS, NPN transistors, PWM, sign, everything you wanna do the pseudocode first and submit a YouTube, working YouTube video of this. Um, but once you get this working, you will feel so confident with this circuit stuff, so confident with this code. It's a pretty cool little lab. Okay, good luck. See you, bye.